take the axe, pin it against the beam of the ladder, keeping your other hand on the other beam. So as you climb, the hand tool is slid up the beam of the ladder, then we'll proceed to the roof level. Today, to make a good, competent firefighter step off the tailboard or out of the apparatus ready to fight fire, takes roughly 125 to 150 hours of training. So it's come a long way. A lot of the training is done in the station house, like it was done 15 years ago. Some fire departments have a practice night every week, others have one every two weeks, some have it once a month. And that class is conducted at the fire station or out in the field, or maybe at county fire schools uh, where three, four, five, six, maybe a dozen classes are all conducted at the same time, sometimes in a school facility, uh, sometimes out in the middle of some farmer's field. This is a computer controlled fire. I can turn the fire on or off with a push of a button, or I can turn the smoke on or off. That's provided for safety purposes. Why do volunteer firefighters need this much sophistication? This fire doesn't care whether it's a volunteer or a career firefighter. If the fire can take you out, it'll take you out. I don't think the people really realize the value they have until the time comes when they need that person there or that fire engine sitting in front of their house for some emergency. Uh, first thing they do is pick up the phone when they have a problem and I've, I've heard lots of them from uh, the fuses are blown in my house, I don't know how to change them, to I have a squirrel running around in the house, to uh, my daughter's not breathing. Doesn't matter. Dirty port, so you want to you guys here. Anyway. It's better than cleaning the floor, that's what we were doing, right? so what the heck. Eventually you're going to see some volunteers replaced with paid people, particularly during the daytime. Uh, that is one of the biggest problems that faces the volunteer fire service. Getting people out of work, uh, a lot of employers can't afford to let one or two or sometimes three of their employees out during the day uh, for three or four hours at a shot. There are changes in, in the individual. I, I was uh, never able to uh, assert myself at one time in my life. Uh, I found that through uh, the need to uh, become assertive on the fire ground. I, I don't know what it was. It was just like all of a sudden my whole personality had changed when I became a firefighter. I used to be real quiet, never used to talk to anybody. I used to be afraid to go like someplace alone. There is just something about it that when you pull up and you've got an incident in front of you, whether it's a car accident or a plane crash or a building fire or a hazardous material incident, whatever, and you've got a chance to solve it and a lot of people are looking to you and your group of firefighters to do something about it. And you get in there and when you accomplish it, if you get there and you have two rooms on fire in a building when you get there, if you contain it to those two rooms and it doesn't ruin the rest of the house or it doesn't get into another wing of apartment building, it's a heck of an accomplishment. What we had to do on this one was get both doors open, and then because of the way the frame had bent around, we had to lift the roof off to get the people out. Now, compared to normal, you know, I don't know if there's a normal auto accident, but how does this fit in with all the other type things you've seen like this? Well, this one, uh, the one thing, for the amount of damage to the car, there was not a lot of damage to the people. Uh, normally, you would see a lot more injuries in a car damage to this extent. They had very minor injuries, which was lucky. There's a tear in the back seat of this car, in the back in the frame back there. I was wondering if you guys had cut that, or is that just... No, that's that's the kind of thing you see with these smaller unibody type cars. If it takes a shot from the side like that, it will tear and it will bend around. It takes getting up out of bed at odd hours. It takes uh, leaving a Thanksgiving dinner, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, five times in one day. 
it takes a lot of dedication, I think, because if you're going to be a firefighter, you have to be willing to miss a lot of your life just to go and save somebody else's. You just have a, a real heart for wanting to take care of people, and that drive just will drive you anywhere. Um, like, for instance, there's times when this, the, there's a storm, lightning storm, it could be snow, and you know you normally would never go out in those conditions, and you'll do anything to get here because you know somebody else is hurt or there's something that they own is in danger. So you want to get there to protect them because that's the calling that you've committed yourself to. When the fire whistle blows or the pager hits or whatever to activate you to a fire, uh, whatever you're doing stops. We hit the pole sideways and I ended up facing the pole because my seat got turned and pushed in. And I broke just about every bone in my body. They had to do a lot of work to get me out. I saw them, you know, with the jaws of life, trying to spread the car, and they were cutting off the top. And all this time, you know, someone's in there trying to keep me cool. And I owe them a lot. I mean, I really owe them my life. <laughs> Everyone that helped me, uh, I met for the first time. They didn't know me at all. And we just kept pumping and brushing and pumping and brushing. I was working through the night, but this is my house. I expect that. But these people just worked and, and didn't ask for anything in return. And the whole kitchen was in flames. So I got out and ran to my daughter's to call. She had already called the fire department. And it just seemed like I wasn't any time before they were here. The volunteer fire department are a lot of the people you know. So they're really more concerned. Funding for this program was provided by Motorola, a full supplier of paging communications equipment to the Volunteer Fire Service. Selective Insurance, a multi-line property and casualty insurance company protecting the volunteer since 1926. Two-way mobile communication, meeting the communication needs of emergency services personnel since 1953. And Provident Agency, accident insurance meeting the challenging demands of emergency services personnel today and tomorrow.